The next part of getting the FT817 set up with FL Digi has nothing to do with FL Digi at all. It has everything to do with the ham radio station setup. We're going to talk about that now in specific. This is a QRP radio and as such we only have a maximum of 5 watts to work with and that's 5 watts coming out the back of this unit. Best case scenario. So we're going to have to do a couple of things to ensure that we could get the maximum amount of power reaching the antenna. The first thing is I'm not going to be using an antenna tuner. I, I don't use antenna tuners at all on anything. Uh, I know for a lot of people that's just not practical. But uh, for a QRP radio, an antenna tuner is so extremely inefficient, I can't imagine how much wattage would actually be making it to the antenna, which is obviously going to be out of tune, but matching for impedance to the radio uh, after going through such a unit. So you're not going to see a tuner on this. Instead, we're going to tune the antenna itself. Second of all, I, I use quality cable. This is a RG8, and this is a, a, a low-loss uh, RG8 cable that I use, so obviously very important. Uh, not so extremely important for HF, uh, not a big deal, but still something to keep in mind. Also here in Florida, we have uh, terrible grounding um, and the house grounding itself is terrible, though I would never use it. I actually have a series of about eight, eight foot long copper rods that are buried uh, along the side of the house and they're welded together. And in turn, they connect to a a uh, hard copper cable that goes up the side of the house here and then this cable, this uh, ribbon cable here uh, connects to that and this is my signal ground. So it's a very good signal ground, you know, relatively speaking for Florida. This is also going to connect to the radio as well. Because I don't use an antenna tuner, I use my trusty MFJ uh, 259 Bravo SWR analyzer. I'm going to turn this on right now. The antenna is, is almost in tune. We're going to be going outside and and we're going to be uh, finishing up some of the uh, final touches here. But right now, I, I think it's around 14100 is where this one is at. I like to get these absolutely perfect. Let's just dial this down here. We can see that it's sitting at, look at the reactants. Sitting at about, about 50, you see about 50 ohms. Reactants of 1. And, and we're looking at SWR 1.0. The antenna is tuned at 14170. Uh, the, the antenna is tuned a bit high, too high frequency. What we're going to do is we're going to go outside and lower the antenna, and we're going to talk about the antenna briefly, what I'm using. Yeah, I generally don't do endorsements or anything. This is my favorite antenna, though. This is a buddy pole. It's set up for vertical right now on 20 meters. This is a full-size vertical on 20. And as such, I've got a Balam connected one-to-one. -one. I, I pretty much know how this is set up. I have a, a permanently affixed bucket for this particular antenna. And here's the Balam. It's an older model, it works nicely though. And what I'm gonna need to do because it is uh, set up for two higher frequencies, I'm gonna have to lengthen this counterpoise. So I'm gonna come over here and make the counterpoise a bit longer. So I've made the length of the counterpoise longer uh, here running up to the antenna. I'm now going to go back to the unit and take a look and see what it's tuned at now. Should be a lower frequency, it should resonate. That is what you call just about perfectly resonant for what we're going to do right now with PSK. 14070, SWR 1.0, 50 ohms of resistance, reactance is zero. Absolutely perfect. At this point, we plug in the uh, RF cable and the ground, power up the unit, we're ready to get started with FL Digi. So what I want to do really quickly is fill out my operator information to make sure that my call sign is going to be going out and what have you and knock that out first. I'm taking care of that right quick. Another feature to add is spotting. It's found here in the miscellaneous tab and under the miscellaneous tab is spotting here. Automatically spot call signs in decoded text. If you filled out the maidenhead locator correctly in the operator menu, as I have done here, which by the way requires all six letters as shown, you'll be able to do that when you hit the initialize button. If it doesn't show an error that it worked, after hitting save, you'll see that the spot button is no longer uh, disabled or grayed out. It's now visible and can now be enabled. Uh, it becomes green as shown here. Now when different stations start sending their call signs 
uh, the locator can be looked up and it can be reported to PSK Reporter and that allows their information to be posted on a graph, which is the very same thing that we're trying to accomplish. It's important to note that in order to transmit from FL Digi into the cable going to the back of the radio, the mode on the radio is going to have to be set for digital as shown here. Keep in mind that there are several different modes shown here in this drop down list in FL Digi and switching over to these modes may in fact take the radio out of the digital mode and prevent you from transmitting. You could just leave it in a mode such as ready where mine is that'll leave it in a digital mode. The problem is when you're logging a call, it's gonna log it with a mode that might not be accurate to the one that you're using to communicate. So you may have to make a manual adjustment to the log information before you save that log entry. Just important to note. So we're going to need to dial in the transmit volume that's coming out of the laptop into the radio. We don't want to overdrive this very high volume just blasting into here. What we're going to do is get the radio on um, the meter setting here. And I'm setting my meter for, for power. I find this to be the most effective way. You can't use the ALC on this one. It really doesn't do a good job. I know in the 450... You can uh, set it up till the level control starts uh, showing signs, but I use the power meter. And on the actual FL Digi, what I'm going to do, here, let me get this. So we're set for the power meter. And what I'm going to do on FL Digi is I'm going to send out CQ. And the bands are pretty quiet right now. Nobody's going to be on. And I'm going to make this louder here so you could hear it. And we could see that I'm adjusting the volume just so just so it peaks. I don't want it too low. I'm gonna show another example. I'll send it out again. We go too low and we have no power a little bit we're not we're not even operating the full power we go way too high you're just overdriving the radio right and there we go we're set up very nicely once we got to that point we can now use the transmit level attenuator shown here on the bottom right of the screen to fine tune the transmit power that we're going to use to send to the radio. At this point, we're all ready to get started. Got everything configured, everything's working, all the volumes are set up. I think that's going to take us into the next video where we're going to check out the performance of this FT817 QRP rig. This is KJ4TLB. Thanks for watching.